Hey everybody. So I was looking back at some previous years and thinking to myself like, man, how, how much improvement is realistic? How much have I tr actually improved over the past 10 years? I've been racing for 10 years at this point. Um, this is coming up on year 10. So I thought I'd go back and take a look at past seasons. I didn't start as like a super um, winning athlete, I guess I would say. I was like mid back of the pack, but I like training. I like I liked the pursuit of it. And you can see this kind of here. I started off, I did my first 10 races, and actually I get my first podium ever was this third place in the Catskills TT. And that really stoked the fire. I thought maybe, you know, maybe I should keep racing. So I decided to do another season. Got uh, got a fixie, single speed, rode it all winter, and um, really, really put in a hard winter and trained a lot. And that consistency definitely paid off early on because I was able to go four to three in two races. I, I won two races and upgraded. And then so this is like my third, first cat three race. Um, and then one, two, three race. I remember Brendan was in this one and, you know, sort of getting my feet wet, but still I was able to throw down as a three all season, worked really hard, was kind of middle of the pack again. And just started grinding it, grinding it, had a decent ride here, went one, two with my teammate, um, got second in this one, second, I think this is the same, no, not the same race, second in this one too, um, and then uh, my big result for the year is getting first in this uh, Catskills um, Cat 3 race, so that was, it gave me the chance to upgrade. But then 2013, life was a little crazy. I didn't have any result, not a single result. That was a tough year. Uh, you get to Cat 2 and it's a whole new ball game. You realize that, wow, like there's some, now you're all of a sudden you're racing really against Cat 1s all the time. Guys that are trying to make it in the pro ranks. I, I, did a, I went back to college for a year and um, raced some of these collegiate athletes. Turns out I had no idea that they were like the future of cycling and super, super strong. Tons of big names in those races. 2014, I moved to Nashville. And again, uh, I didn't have a super great year. This one uh, was a little race, like a little bit. It's an open category. So it was like, I don't know. I just had the confidence going into it and did well. and um, But still not a super strong year. Um, I crashed a couple times and 2015 things finally started to, uh, come around. Uh, but the whole while I'm training a hundred percent. So I guess my point here is that like, you know, if you don't have a ton of success in one year, that doesn't mean you can't find success in the next year. You shouldn't think like that. And I never, I mean, there's definitely points within these bad seasons where I doubted myself and wasn't, you know, necessarily sure if racing was something that I was going to continue to be able to pursue, but, um, stuck with it and eventually it came around. So, you know, you just, you stick through it. You just make it happen. You keep going, you keep grinding. Uh, and then this was a great year, 2015. I, I won a ton of races um, 2016 was another super fun year. And then, um, 2017, 18, uh, did some more traveling, started to, you know, hit some harder races, 2018, 2019 raced on DNA and really went for it. Um, traveled a bunch again, some pretty, pretty decently consistent results another hard crash then to 2019 and that takes us to now. So 2020. So if you look back, let's look around like 40 minute power. I thought this was pretty interesting. Um, now granted I wasn't doing time trials. I was, you know, in some years I was trying to be a, a road racer all around you can see like 2017, 2016, I really was working on that VO two max and that anaerobic push. You can see I'm, above the curve here uh, for the three three minute duration that was really kind of always felt like that was kind of like my specialty um, 
And then, you know, in 2018, 2019, I started training a little bit more like a sprinter, actually trying to save, um, spend less time working in this, you know, high threshold and VO2 max range. Uh, and then this year, I've, I've been doing a lot more Zwift. My training has, volume has dropped. My, there's no group riding, so my training has pretty much been alone and my long power especially is better than it's ever been my vo2 max is tracking about the same i haven't really done any too much anaerobic work yet uh but it's the consistency year to year that i find really interesting so if we go like best 30 put this deflection point best 37 minute power in 2020, 380, 2019, 373, so eight walk gain. Season's not over yet though. 2018. All right, see, it's a little less. 2017. A little less, 2016. You know, and I'll say, I, I think the way I choose my intervals has gotten a lot smarter. The way I execute intervals is what's the major difference. It's, it's, it's crazy different to go look back, and I'll post all these in the... Uh, YouTube comments, but if you go back and look at some of these training rides or go check out my Strava and just pick on a random week in the middle of the spring or something, you know, what should be like a training week for a race in a couple weeks. And, and I can go and do like a little ride analysis. And it's just hilarious to me that I thought that that's what training was. You know, I was just wasting a ton of time. The way I pedaled was so different and it's, it's the way you pedal. The power meter is just showing you the way you're pedaling. Are you continuing to pedal the whole time? Are you keeping your zones tight? Are you ri really riding aerobically when you're training aerobically? Just to finish this off, you know, 2016, three, you know, so the whole point, tw let's look, 2014 in compared to 2020, 40 minute power. 40 minutes for me is, is kind of on the long side of typically of my TTE. I, this year I've done more, 40 plus minute threshold work than ever before. And it definitely is, I feel a lot stronger, but if you simply look right at, you know, 40 minute power, 335 in 2014, 380 in 2020, 45 Watts. That's, that's a lot. And I should also say that I probably about seven, eight pounds lighter now than I was then. So, yeah, some things have gone down, but aerobic output is the number one thing. It's an aerobic sport, right? It's your event should determine how much big riding you have to do in general. I'm going to go ahead and say that, but threshold power, VO2 max power are the two leading factors in how well you're going to do out on the road. Uh, you're not, if you have no sprint, you're not going to win a sprint, but being able to go out and get KOMs and go fast, that's all VO2 and threshold. So I'm training less now and, and yeah, the years, the years stack on, on themselves. But if I had taken a, if I had taken a full year off somewhere in there and then resumed in the next, you know, a couple years of riding and didn't train at all for a couple of years, but I was riding and then had been doing what I'm doing now, the consistency in which I'm executing rides now, then I'm pretty sure I would be exactly where I am now because there's not that much fitness carryover year to year. I think what you do is you train your mind and you're training your ability to execute and improving that ability. So I thought that was kind of interesting uh, I didn't start super strong. I think there was something in there that I was able to tap into. You know, I, I like training. If 
simply the fact that I enjoy training so much is a, I think a, a positive attribute. And, um, so wrap it up. I really find that it's, uh, it's pretty interesting that I'm able to be on, you know, my average, average time per week is just about nine hours. I'm in a recovery week this week. We'll see how it goes. Got some VO2 max coming up after that. Um, but yeah, the takeaway here is I'm riding nine hours a week. Every hour counts. If I had been riding, when I was riding 16, 20 hours a week, if I had been making every single hour count, I would have been a lot better back then. So that's my tip. Perfect your execution of efforts. In 10 years, my execution has changed a lot. And I think that's a huge, huge part of why I've improved. So hope you found this helpful. Look in the comments for uh, some of these other rides. Check out my my writing on Strava. I mean, it's it's pretty consistent, uh, and I think that's really playing into uh, the uh, consistency of the legs too. Thanks, guys.